This week felt exactly like 2020, 2021, and it felt great. I came out of retirement because I haven't traded the whole month, and yesterday was the first time, and it was also a great time. So Jamie AMC went off the rail, and this was caused by Roaring Kitty just tweeting about it. But the funny thing is that it's not even Roaring Kitty that's actually tweeting. Let me break this down, but before doing that, a quick reminder that all the best tools will be linked in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. Everything started when Roaring Kitty decided to tweet over the weekend and this sent the market into a frenzy. And to be honest, when he tweeted over the weekend, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a big deal. But when it came to Monday, everything started to pick up so much in volume and the stocks of GME and AMC gained billions in market cap and a lot more billions than I ever thought this could gain. And we're talking about a bigger market cap than GME at its peak in 2021. What was interesting about this time is that we had people like Zach Morris and also Moon Market trying to pump this stock. And something that became very obvious very quickly is that these guys, when they pump some stock, it's pretty lame compared to Roaring Kitty. But the biggest speculation that happened over the weekend and also during this week is that it's probably not even him tweeting. And I wanted to bring your attention to a couple things. So what we have on his Twitter page, it's literally just videos or film clips after film clips, and it just doesn't stop. What really made it obvious, even if I knew a few days ago, was this clip over here. Investors who had lost big on GameStop were looking for someone to blame. And Roaring Kitty was starting to look suspicious. Shut up, bitch! So this might be funny or might not be funny, but the biggest takeaway is he's not even posting using his real voice and that's really unusual for him. Normally he's pretty out there in terms of YouTube videos or even posts on his subreddit, which he hasn't done. This is kind of obvious that at this point this account is not really owned or is not being used by him and some people also speculated that he decided to sell his account. But if we just do the math, just saying that he still owned GME because he said that he's never going to sell it, this boost in market cap probably made him around $60 million, which would make him a really, really good investor. Even if we hate GameStop or GME, or even if you love GameStop or GME, he's just the best. So if we bring this back to who made money and how to make money on this stock, there was multiple ways, but pretty happy to see that Lens made a seven figure trade on GME and also AMC. It's something I wish I did myself. I didn't, but I still made a bit of money. And this is quite funny because for a retired trader, he's doing pretty well for himself because every time he shows up, it's only for a seven figure trade. And that brings an interesting conversation. I was talking with a friend of mine that was saying that Lance is losing or wasting his time trying to teach people at SMB when he could be trading and making all the money. If you consider that he trades about once a month or maybe twice a month, maybe a bit more, considering that his big win are in the millions of dollars, and I would really doubt that his biggest loser are in the seven fig this year. So if you consider that his biggest winner are way above his biggest loser, he's probably averaging about a million dollars a month. 10 million or 12 million dollars a year, which for someone that's being part time, I think it's just fine. Sorry for the interruption, but just letting you guys know that if you're looking for the best broker, scanner, charts, or newsfeed, everything will be linked down in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get back to the video. So let's go over the execution. So Lance decided to go on the two minute chart for his trade. There's a few things, right? He really waited for the pew capsulation and then decided to enter his first position, add it on this base break over here and then cover it over here. And from that point on, because you have such a big top, shorting pops make a lot of sense because you can really just go and risk this higher day over here. And I think that's what he did. After that, when we're breaking towards the open, he just added some back. And I have to suspect that these covers right over here are there because this was very close to the open. And you have to be careful when you're holding a position into the open because over here, maybe, you know, maybe it spikes on the 930 and it goes to, I don't know, it was like 85 at th that point and it would have been a big, big loss 
versus taking some off and just waiting post open to add it versus a level. Added back over here and was very scalpy on the cover and just covered it to the big puke. And then it was just about shorting pop and also finding the breakdown over here and pretty much so on and so forth. The other trade he took was on AMC over here, which was technically the exact same trade. And there's something that's quite important is when there's a team or sector, it's really important to just check what all the sector is doing because if you're long one and all the other ones are crashing, whatever your position is, it's gonna be on the wrong side. So you have to really follow what the overall sector is. And in that sector, you have to look at what is trading the cleanest or the best. For this specific case, it was AMC that was, was a better trade. Jimmy was just a bit choppy or a bit flippy floppy. And uh, that's why I made most of my money on AMC. So when it came to the best opportunity for this stock, I think the short was really, really great. There's something that not many people talked about, but I really think that buying this breakout over here, risking this pretty much this low right over here was offering a really good risk reward. When you're on the long side, there's something is that you never know how high, how high it's going to go. And in this case, it was really, really good. A simple strategy could have been uh, when we break a prior bar low, maybe here it does it, but at this point, I think here was probably the best exit or even on this really, really big parabolic. After such a big move, you're probably taking some off and that would totally make sense. But I overall think that this was the best opportunity in terms of risk reward. And you could also lean on AMC that was already running a lot, a lot at that time. And when it comes to today, AMC was the play in this whole saga. And for the only reason that they decided to dilute the stock once again, this guy is never gonna stop and I'm honestly impressed of how many times he's gonna do it before somebody says something and the ape lose confidence. And without going into the filing too much because there's nothing to really explain other than he decided to dump additional share to sustain the company and make sure it continues to work. But in reality, this guy just takes advantage of every time that the stock pops to sell additional share to the market and make sure he gets his bonus. A great way to explain how everything happened when it comes to their strategy at AMC and their stock. Here's a great clip posted by the short bear. The real question is, who are we selling this to? Same people we've been selling it to for the last two years and whoever else will buy it. But John, if you do this, you will kill the market for years. It's over. and you're selling something that you know has no value. We are selling to willing buyers at the current fair market price. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe. I'll put all the best tools for day trading in the description. Peace.